at here is an image of the Adobe Office in San Francisco. And what I want to do is use Perspective Warp to change the viewing perspective of the content in this image. So the first thing I need to do is go to Edit and then Apply Perspective Warp. And the Perspective Warp is a two-step process. So the first thing you need to do is define your planes. And these are essentially planes that match the, the geometry within the image. So you draw a rectangle and then you need to make this rectangle kind of match up with the content within your image. I'm actually going to extend a little bit beyond the dimensions of the building just so that when the transformation is applied, it's applied to more than just the content of the building, but actually the content that surrounds the building as well. So we've got one, pl one plane defined to match this wall, and now I'm going to define a second plane to match the street in the other direction. And so I've drawn my second plane, and when I drag it closer, you'll see that the two uh, edges in the center are highlighted. When I let go, it will snap two so that those planes are now connected along the center seam. And then let me drag the plane corners so that it matches the perspective of the buildings. That looks about close enough. And then the second part, after you've defined the, the planes, you need to switch to warp mode. So it's in the top left corner, you click on warp, and now we can start adjusting each vertex of the planes. So I can take the top one and drag it, and you can see that um, the perspective changes, but you really need to adjust multiple in order to get the full effect. Let me go ahead and reset this. The other thing that you can do is you can lock uh, the sides at horizontal or vertical just by holding on the shift key and you know, when you mouse over it you'll see it highlighted and you click on it. And now that plane, the intersection of those two planes is always going to be vertical. So I can move the vertex and it shifts both vertex across that seam. And if I want it to look like we're facing more to the right, I can go ahead and adjust the vert vertex and you can see that the perspective of the image changes. When I've got the angle that I want to keep, I can just go ahead and click the checkbox here to commit perspective warp. And you can see that it's now been applied as a smart filter to my layer. And I can turn this on and off. You can see the original and then you can see the perspective shift. Now we're looking at the third example where I want to take this background image and I want to composite this truck over top of it. You'll notice that the perspective of the truck is close but it's not quite the same perspective as the road. I've got another layer here where I've actually already removed the background and you can see that we've got the truck overlaid over the road. Yeah, the background is in black and white, the truck's in color, but um, that's okay, we'll fix that in a, in a minute. What I want to do is go ahead and change the perspective of this truck so that it matches the background. And um, if anyone's seen the movie Transformers might recognize, that's Optimus Prime's truck. Um, and it is. What I want to do is select the layer. So in this case, it's just layer two is my truck. And I want to do a perspective warp on the truck. Now I'm going to define two planes. The first one is going to be the side of the truck. And you want to have the plane so that they more or less match up with the lines of the truck. And the second and the second plane is going to be the front of the truck. And again, you want the guidelines of the plane to match up with the actual lines of the truck. Now I'm going to switch to warp mode. And here we can start adjusting the perspective of the image so that the truck better matches the perspective of the background layer. And now let's go ahead and hit apply. And we'll commit those changes to the image. And now I've already got a couple of smart filters here. I've got motion blur to make it uh, just slightly blurry so that the, the truck's not too crisp um, within the image because let's say it was actually driving. And I've already got camera raw set to reduce saturation so that the image is in black and white. And now you can see that we have a truck which I very quickly and easily was able to get it to match the perspective of the background image so it looks like, yes, that truck could have possibly been driving down the road at that point in time. <laughs> 